This video is brought to you by the lovely guys over at Robotoys. For all your Hasbro, Takara, third party and knockoff desires, Robotoys has you covered. For 10% off, use the code DOCTORLOCK10% off at the checkout. Now on to today's diagnosis. So Barricade's been getting a lot of attention lately, first off he's gotten the Studio Series toy recently, and then of course he's gotten some wonderful attention in Siege, despite the fact that Siege actually has MicroMasters, they actually went for the movie-verse version of Barricade, although I don't really think anyone's actually that angry about it. Curse you Hasbro! Curse you! And then of course, seeing the bandwagon, we've now gotten some representation in the recent New Age lineup. One thing that New Age is known for is their weird and wacky repaints, and often I look forward to those repaints instead of the more traditional figures. Instead of Ironhide, I got the Diaclone Ironhide. Instead of Jazz, I got the Shockwave. Instead of Megatron, I got the toy version of Megatron. And of course, Barricade follows the tradition. They come out with a lot of repaints, second to only Toy World in the third party world at the moment, I think. But each of those repaints feels worth it, and given their small price, tag, you really can't go wrong. But of course, the base figure needs to be good. So, the question, is it? Well, let's take a look. If New Age Bumblebee slash Goldbug was a sort of surprising representation of the Masterpiece version, then this guy right here is an amazing representation. The step up between Bumblebee and this is truly on point. What they've done here is bloody brilliant. Right off the bat, the car mode is amazing. They've got everything you could possibly want except the Decepticon symbol, so conceivably you would never need repro labels for this. They've got the headlights, they've got the windshield wipers, every single window is painted, you've got the headlights painted, Police decos, to punish and enslave is right there. Tail lights, more police decos. This guy is painted amazingly. And you know the best part? He's got a shiny black finish to really make him look premium. And he does feel premium as well. The plastic on this thing is super solid. It's like Hasbro Takara masterpiece level at such a small scale. The design is also amazing. Now, credit where credit is due, this is mimicking the Masterpiece version, so a lot of those details are taken from there. You see they've molded in those tiny little windscreens there, and yes, they are supposed to be ridiculously far across the body, but they've done an amazing job there. The painted windows are really cool. Yeah, you've kind of got to deal with this extra bit going up because of the way it transforms, but the fact that they actually painted the windows to begin with is awesome. The underside is mostly clean, but unfortunately that's where my main gripe on the figure comes in. The head doesn't really go in all the way, so he doesn't roll very well because the head's pushing up against there. And I don't want to roll him very well because I don't want to damage the paint on the head because the head is painted exquisitely as well. But he does have pinwheels with silver paint to accentuate the hubcaps. Just... Wow! Bloody amazing job they've done. And this is just the alt mode. Imagine what we're going to get to later in the robot mode. Just... I, I can't believe the amazing job they've done. And I mean, sorry to make stupid comparisons that aren't really size comparisons, but you see Goldbug here. The difference in quality is amazing, and this guy is really bloody good, but Barricade is just something else. But of course, size comparisons with your standard Legion figure, your standard Legends figure, your standard Siege Micromaster, your not-so-standard LEGO minifigure, and Crumbs. Transformation is very reminiscent of the Masterpiece version. First thing you want to do is get these windows out of the way, or the doors out of the way. And yes, the doors do open if you so desire. A nice touch that's due to the transformation. But from there, you come around to the back and bring in the windows like so. And you can rotate them up later just because it's a bit easier then. You come to the back here and extend the legs on the double hinges. Rotate this entire section up and come around here and bring up these little heel spurs and then you can separate the legs like so. You then want to untab this whole section here and just bring it up like so, and that will allow you to rotate the entire torso around. Now from here, the arm transformation is a little bit cool. You bring the arms out like so, and then they're on this sort of hinge here that locks into place with the shoulders, so the shoulder mass is a bit different, so it's able to fit into the vehicle mode better. Then you bring the elbows down, you bring the fists out, then you have to bring the head around first before you bring down the entire torso, and the head has to be facing up for that. And once that's done, you can kind of get everything into place, like bringing the arms around into their proper position, like so, and bringing the car doors up, and wow, that's a handsome fella. And right out of the transformation, holy hell, this is an amazing looking figure. 
Of course, you've got way more purple on show, and it's a nice, deep, rich purple, which is a far cry from the Hasbro version. It is, of course, based on the Guido Guidi art, however, this figure comes after the Siege version was announced, so New Age kind of jumped on that bandwagon. I'm really glad they did, but you have to acknowledge that this was not their idea. But whether it was their idea or not, it's a bloody amazing figure. However, he's not quite complete yet. He does come with weapons. This back section here does allow you to peg in the guns. Lovely way of storing the guns too. And of course he has a pistol as well to ask if people are ladies, man, whatever. But in robot mode, utterly gorgeous, lovely paint from the vehicle mode coming through, lovely sculpt work, perfect proportions. I know he may seem a little bit squat from where I'm filming it from, but it does not come across as that at all. The only real gripe I guess I could have is that the legs are a little bit hollow, but given how it has to transform and how much it has to compact, I, I really don't give a damn, to be honest. Just an amazing little fellow over here. They've done so much right with it. Everything just looks utterly gorgeous. And he's articulated amazingly as well. You've got a ball joint for the head that also gets some nice upward movement as well. The shoulders are on ball joints with an extra hinge that gets them extra outward, which is good because this wheel gets in the way of the outward movement. You get a double jointed elbow along with the ball joint, so you get nice range there. No wrist swivel, but that's fine at the size. But an ab crunch, an ab crunch above the waist swivel. It, wow, on a Legends figure, that is amazing. I'm sorry, but I've been asking for that on a Legends figure for ages. You see, when you put an ab crunch above the waist swivel, it allows for much more posability. But when you put it below, then you can end up just using the legs instead. But yes, he does have a waist swivel. He does have ball joint and hips. A thigh swivel here. He's got a double joint at the knee as well as the super bend, so you can get any amount of rotation there. And a ball joint of foot that acts as an ankle tilt and a pivot there, so... Posability on this guy is not a problem in the slightest. Size-wise, here he is next to a standard Legion figure, showing that he is a pretty decent size. A standard Legends figure, and he's not in frame. A standard Siege Micromaster. A not-so-standard Lego minifigure. And who could forget crumbs. All in all, I am utterly amazed by how much they've been able to put into this little figure here. As a matter of fact, it hasn't gone unnoticed. Several of my friends who don't collect third party have also gotten versions of this mold and been utterly blown away. Yes, it is a smaller version of the masterpiece, but they've managed to bring it down to such a small scale and make it work. The fact that it works is what truly makes this company stand above the rest. Iron Factory has done some downscalings of other figures for their designs as well, but some of them have been clunky, and let's face it, there's an elegance to New Age, an elegance that no third party company has aside from them. They've done a remarkable job bringing this design, and by extension this character, to such a small scale. And if you want any version of this mold, then please go out and buy it because you will not be disappointed. And I think one of the best places to get those is today's sponsor, Robotoys. They specialize in both official and unofficial figures, so you've got a wide variety to choose from, including tons of versions of this specific mold. You can use the code DRLOCK 10% off at the checkout to get 10% off a single order. So I recommend using it on a large order in case you want to get every single version of this mold. You can get 10% off multiple items, which does work quite well. Or, you know, you can use 10% off Freedom Leader. Freedom Leader looks bloody good. So out of all the current third-party Legends companies, New Age comes out on top due to their immaculate track record. They haven't put out a single bad figure. Every figure has been a complete winner in engineering, hands down. And the fact that we've got this amazing barricade here, I just can't be happier. But the question remains, who is New Age's top rival in this third-party collecting scheme? It certainly is an Iron Factory because they're going for an IDW aesthetic, despite the fact that some people might think it is. So tomorrow, let's go take a look and see what the competition is like.